Welcome to part 15 in this UNet tutorial series and in this video the zombies will be able to bite back. So uh, I think first of all I'm going to make a new material and I'm going to call it zombie red. So when the zombie is attacking then the zombies color is going to change to indicate that. So and zombie red, uh, let me see, 255, 75 to give this sort of pale looking red, pasty looking red. Yep, that's it. And uh, that's it. Now I'm going to go into the scripts and make a new script. And I'm going to call it a zombie uh, attack. And open it up. And I'm also going to open up the uh, zom zombie target script as well, because I'm going to make the target a public uh, variable now. So this one, the private transform target transform. Now I will make it a public transform. All right, coming back to the zombie attack. Uh, as usual, the script needs to get uh, changed. So unity engine dot networking. All right, and then just make it a network behavior. And then there's quite a few variables to go in as well. So private float attack rate. Uh, which I'm going to set at 3 and then uh, private float next attack and uh, private int damage next um, private float min distance which I'll set to maybe 2 I think this is um, yeah, it'll be like the, uh, I guess the uh, distance the uh, zombie has to be, the, well, the min distance before they can actually attack. And then private float current distance. And uh, then a private transform, my transform. Then a, a reference to that, um, well, I'm going to set up a reference to the target script. Uh, so zombie target target script and um, the materials as well serialize field and this is going to be a private material and a zombie green and another one for zombie red all right and I'll slot those in in the inspector when I attach the script. So then in the start function, uh, quite simply, my transform is equal to transform. And then uh, the target script is equal to uh, get component. So it's a zombie. So just get the zombie target uh, component. All right. And then. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make some functions and then use a coroutine uh, to actually run it. So the coroutine will then, instead of it running, for example, an update every frame, I'll just have it run every 0.2 seconds or something like that. So it'll be a lot more uh, efficient. And uh, I will just write that right now. I actually don't believe I, I don't think I need an update function at all. So why would I, since I'm doing that? So I'm going to just use an I enumerator. And I'll call it attack. And then I will put an endless for loop. And uh, then yield return uh, new wait for seconds, 0 0.2 seconds. And then I will check if the target is in range. So check, it's a new function. Check if target uh, in range. So this is where I'm actually going to do stuff. And back in the start function, I'm just going to start that coroutine, which will go on forever until this zombie is destroyed. So start coroutine, um, attack, oops, not attack, right, attack, that's the one. Okay. Uh, and then next I need to make a function for this, check if target in range, so void, check if target in range. And uh, for this one, uh, this is where I'm going to just simply check, you know, first of all, that 
there is actually a target. So this call, this, um, oh, something I'm forgetting. I shouldn't forget. So I should say if uh, is server. So it must only run on the server. I don't want it running on the uh, remote clients at all, well, on the clients at all. So none of this stuff is going to run there. It's just uh, this, what we see at the moment will run on the server. Uh, okay, so then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to first check that there is actually a target. So target script before trying to attack anything. Uh, so if target transform, uh, target script, the target transform is not equal to null, then in that case, I can do stuff. So in that case, then I will get the current distance. So is equal to vector three dot distance. Uh, so the target script dot target transform dot position to the zombies position my transform dot position. Now if that distance is less than the minimum distance, so the required distance for attacking, then I will do some more stuff. So if less than min distance, and also uh, the time dot time is greater than next attack. So that way it, um, it doesn't just uh, attack every 0.2 seconds. There is a wait time of three seconds before the zombie can attack again. So then next attack is equal to time dot time plus uh, the attack rate. Okay. And then after that, now I'm going to uh, uh, get the player health script because now the player is getting attacked and deduct their health. So this is all happening on the server. So target script dot target transform dot get component. And now it's the uh, player health and it's simply deduct health by how much and that is simply the damage amount. Okay. Um, then next I'm going to what I'm going to do is I'm going to have another coroutine for changing the zombies material and uh, then an, then a client RPC so that the remote clients also run uh, that coroutine uh, as well. Uh, so I'll just write that here right now just for myself start coroutine and it's going to be called a change zombie map and uh, I will also have an RPC so RPC change zombie appearance and I've also put a note for myself uh, that I would uh, that this is for the host player because uh, client RPCs don't run on the host player so you just need to know that client RPCs when I've made it uh, which I'll do right now they don't run on the host player so you've got to fire that uh, function separately uh, client RPC and I'm going to call this void uh, and just copy this name here okay and then inside of it uh, I'm going to start that coroutine just like here so that way on the uh, clients that happens as well and then now I'll make the actual coroutine so an I enumerator of this name and then uh, I'll just say get component renderer dot material is equal to a zombie red then it's going to be a yield return new wait for seconds and uh, the amount of time is going to be the I'm just going to use say for example the attack rate divided by two and then next I'll change the material back to uh, the zombie green and that's it. Uh, I believe that is it. I have a fully functioning script just waiting for me to just put it. And yes, I did change that to public, so that's good. So in that case, I'll attach it to the zombie. And uh, where is my script? Uh, there it is, zombie attack, drop it in. Now I need the two materials, so I'll just attach those. That's all done. 
And why don't I just uh, try it, I guess. Um, yeah, I can just hit play and try that. Okay, so if I run up to them, will they gobble up the player? Oh yes, they certainly are. The health is dropping. Yep, I can see the zombies attacking. Oh, there we go. The player is finished. Right, so uh, how about I do that again? And I'll build and run. And have another player in the scene. Okay, all the zombies are there. Oops, click the wrong button. Okay, so I can see all of those uh, zombies approaching this player there. Because that's what they're locked on to. They're moving uh, pretty quickly. I can shoot them too. Nothing stopping me doing that. And there we go. I can see them attacking uh, this other player. And that's it. The health is dropping and the player is about to die. And now that he's dead, now they start coming towards this player. And now they'll be attacking so I can respawn and see what's happening. And I can see that, yes, the material is changing correctly. There we go. So, yep, I'd say that it's working pretty well. And uh, now they'll come for this guy. And that's it. Well, that's it. That's pretty much it. So the zombies are attacking now. All right, well... Uh, thanks for watching, and um, I think in the next video I'll improve the motion syncing. I won't use the network transform anymore. I'll make that um, much smoother using uh, just interpolation, and after that I'll improve the spawning, just change it a little bit. Alright, so thanks for watching, and see you next time.